I, I, I hated being mentally ill. I, I hated every moment of it. And so for me, there is no taste. There's no texture. There's no social setting worth me ever risking my sanity. It is my most prized earthly possession because I went for decades without having any sanity. And now I'm a fully functioning uh, bald-headed guitar player who, who's enjoying a quality of life that's just, just beyond wonderful. Red Lloyd, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me. I look forward to this discussion. Same here. I heard you first about two years ago. I think it was on Ivory Cummins podcast. Uh, I always had you in mind and the things that you were saying there always stayed with me. And uh, I got to know your Instagram page some time ago. And I'm glad that it was a means to, the, uh, to an end and we managed to arrange this interview. When I was uh, when I was getting ready uh, ready for this talk, these last two days I've been listening to some of the other interviews that you've had, and now I'm even more interested to know more about your journey. Why don't you let us know about your background, how you got here to the carn carnivore diet, and what you are doing now for the people who might not know you. Well, thank you for that. I'm a 61-year-old uh, musician. Uh, I Thousands of years ago, when I had hair and a better waistline, I did work in the psychiatric uh, field for a time. Uh, I grew up in a standard American diet-type kind of home. My parents had an enormous vegetable garden. We had fresh vegetables year-round. We also had plenty of meat, a lot of starches. Um, we were we were following the food pyramid and out of the four of us uh my sister suffers from ulcerative colitis my dad passed away in 2020 after 20 plus years of type 2 diabetes that no one told him he could resolve completely uh and by the time i learned through the carnivore way of eating in the carnivore community the type 2 diabetes was easily something you could get rid of via diet he was already too far gone to be helped, unfortunately. And uh, my mom's had a myriad of uh, autoimmune issues most of her life, though she's doing very well right now at the age of 85. And I suffered from chronic mental illness, major depression with psychotic features, anxiety, and insomnia for over 43 years of my life. Um, and I was fortunate to learn about the carnivore way of eating from watching a 30-minute uh, cutout from a Joe Rogan podcast when one Dr. Jordan Peterson told me in the world how he and his daughter, how his daughter figured out that if she only ate beef, salt, and water, her depression symptoms went away and so did her arthritis. And he started you know he he started the diet and his anxiety problems and depression problems improved at that time by 80 percent now i'd say he's at 100 percent wellness um and then i i was stunned you mean all these psychiatrists i've seen all the therapists i've seen and all i needed to do was change my diet if it was anybody but Jordan Peterson telling me that, I probably would have just clicked on because, hey, just eating meat, that's crazy. But uh, it was Dr. Peterson and a man who preaches the value of always telling the truth or at least not lying. A man of great integrity. So I took him at his word. And then I started doing some research. And the next person I found was Dr. Sean Baker. Again, somebody with incredible integrity. He he used to work in the military, and he used to have the nuclear launch codes in a missile silo. They just don't let anyone do that. You have to be an incredibly 
well put together human being to even be considered for that. So again, integrity, integrity. And I was so amazed and impressed by these gentlemen. And then I heard Amber O'Hearn give a talk in 2017 uh, via YouTube from Keto Fest about how as a species, we literally came down out of the trees eating meat. And I looked at my wife one day, I said, I have to start trying this because I don't like being crazy. I hated it. And July 16th, 2018 was my first day of zero carb living. And today is my 1669th day of only eating meat and only drinking water. And I've had exactly zero cheat days in between. And uh, I, I've been symptom free now for over four years. August 9th, the morning of August 9th, my depression symptoms vanished out of my life and have never returned. Six months after I started carnivore, my anxiety was completely resolved and has never returned. And 10 months after I started the carnivore way of eating, I lost 43 years worth of insomnia problems. Never to return. So life, my quality of life is ridiculously good. I experience what I call effortless daily happiness every day. I wake up every day before, smiling before my feet hit the floor. And this happiness and joy never leaves me. And I'm so grateful to be able to share that part of my life with you and your audience. Amazing. Uh, how come that you have had zero days of cheating what kept you in line i know you've talked about it but i want to have it here too that's fine that's fine no i i didn't i i i hated being mentally ill i i hated every moment of it and so for me there is no taste there's no texture there's no social setting worth me ever risking my sanity it is my most prized earthly possession because i went for decades without having any sanity and now i'm a fully functioning uh bald-headed guitar player who who's enjoying a quality of life that's just just beyond wonderful and that's why I do these interviews. That's why I advocate for the carnivore way of eating because people need to know you're not broken. You're not a genetic error. You were just like me and many billions of other people taught to eat things we should never have put into our mouth. And I will never deviate from the carnivore way of eating as long as there's meat available to eat. Because there's just no good reason for me to ever abandon this. There's no good reason in life for me to ever put something in my mouth that I know does not belong there. And one of the great benefits of being carnivore is you can't rationalize doing awful things anymore. It's I, People who are able to do that, I, there's, there's something wrong with them. Because I just can't make myself do that. And I don't want to. I hope that answers your question. Mm -hmm. And also, I remember that you mentioned uh, something about things creeping into your diet and you felt bad after them uh, when you started your carnivore diet. Well, I had I, there was a couple of, of mistakes that I made. One was inadvertent and the other one was a hard lesson. Six weeks into my carnivore experience, my wife and I were at a grocery store. And there was this, at the checkout counter, there were these tins of mints. Mm -hmm. And on and the packaging said, zero carb, zero sugar. Well, I looked at my wife and I said, well, that's me. Zero carb, no sugar. I bought a tin of mints. And I ate one. Popped it in my mouth. Between the cash register and the car, my help, my my behavior deteriorated. Before we got out of the parking lot, my wife was telling me I sounded just like I used to. I wasn't being very nice to her. 
and that I was sounding just as crazy as I ever did before. And that's how quickly it happened. Um, so I learned a great deal from that. I learned what it meant to never put a sweet taste into your mouth of any kind. I don't care what's on the label. No. And then uh, a couple of years after that, we were at a Brazilian steakhouse, Fogo de Chao, in fact. And they had this mountain of some of the most beautiful bacon I've ever seen in my life. No signage on it. I only eat lean ground beef and bacon. <laughs> so I immediately grabbed a big handful of that bacon, put it on my little plate and shoved three pieces of it into my mouth and nearly gagged because they had been basted with brown sugar. And I had three days there where the crazy did start to come back a little bit, where my behavior got sideways. I wasn't, the depression didn't come back and it wasn't the anxiety. It's what I call the crazy. My inability to accurately perceive my environment was one of the things that I had, I suffered with while I was mentally ill. And that would come back. There was also a time that um, I'd gotten gotten this really good job working selling cell phones inside a, uh, a Walmart supercenter. I got paid. I didn't have to meet a quota. It was easy work. And I'm a bit of a geek when it comes to technology. So I was like, this is great. The only downside was I couldn't eat when I was hungry. You only had these weird times that you could eat. And inevitably, I, that's when I, right before it was time for me to go take lunch would be when a customer would come up. And I might spend an hour and a half, two hours with this customer before I ever got to eat. Now, I was still eating the same amount of meat every day, but I couldn't eat when I was hungry. Well, after two weeks of that, my wife and I had a disagreement. And I just remember thinking, we're really pouring a lot of energy into this, but I feel like I'm making some good points. So let's see where it takes us. And my wife finally threw up her hands and says, you just, you sound, ex you're not making any sense and you sound just like you used to. And so that was a big red flag. And I went, well, wait a minute, we need to figure this out. And the only thing that we could conclude was, was because I couldn't eat when I was hungry, there was an accumulative effect that reared its ugly head that morning. And so I realized meat is not just my fuel, it's my medicine. And if I'm late taking my medicine, bad things start to happen. So those, those, those weren't slips. I wasn't knowingly, you know, cheating or anything like that. Those are just things that I've learned the hard way during the first year of the journey. I am in a kind of similar situation now because of the kind of job that I have. And since I, uh, I'm working from an office, uh, recently I came to the conclusion that maybe it is better that I eat a huge breakfast, three packs of ba bacon, six eggs, and then don't eat anything at work and come back home. And then only, only then start, start eating something. I've been doing it for some time. I have to admit that it is difficult. I mean, there is some comfort coming with it. I don't get sleepy at work at all. And the uh, 30 minute break I have, I can use it the way I want to. Mm -hmm. mm, but yeah, that's a challenge. And I really love to eat. I really don't like fasting. I like to be able to eat every time I am hungry, anytime I am hungry, not to stick to a kind of schedule. It is tough, so it is really important to be able to eat whenever and however much you want to eat. Yeah, I, I had to give that job up because, you know, the, it, to stay in that job was putting my sanity at risk. And, and to keep that job, you know, losing my sanity was not worth any amount of that. I was not going to do that. Um. And then, of course, after COVID happened, I wouldn't have had that job anyway. <laughs> they shut that whole operation down once COVID hit. Uh -huh. But uh, it, it, yeah, it, 
people don't realize how important it is that when your body's craving nutrition, you got to listen. Because if you don't respond to that properly, you can end up in a world of hurt, especially if you've got a history of mental illness. Something that you mentioned about your uh, genetics. Uh, so just to be clear about that and not assume, you didn't change your genetics to heal, right? Say that again, please. I didn't you, did, you, you didn't change your... Uh, everyone says that uh, you are fat because of your genetics. You are sad because of your genetics. No, no. You genetics, healed without changing your genetics, I believe. Genetics had nothing to do with... with why I ended up mentally ill. It had nothing to do with why I ended up being obese and weighing almost 300 pounds in January of 2015. A poor diet had everything to do with that. And as I got older, um, I became a, a practicing sugar addict on a level that was, now that I think about it, rather horrifying. Um, and in January of 2015, I weighed 289 pounds. I was on seven different psych medications. And I, I discovered on the recommendation of a friend of mine that I was working with at the time musically that medical marijuana treated my symptoms successfully. Unlike all the psychiatric meds that I was taking for years and years and years as prescribed. And I discovered, much to my surprise, that consuming uh, an edible form of med medical marijuana was the greatest medicine I ever took during those years. And it, it leveled my mood out. It lowered my anxiety significantly. I could sleep so much better at night. My quality of life improved greatly. I'm still not well because it didn't it didn't heal anything, but it did allow me to have a better quality of life. And about ten days after I had that first uh, cannabis cookie, I'm sitting up that my wife made. I'm sitting on the edge of my bed and I'm trying to put my shoes and socks on, and my belly is in the way. And I realized that's that's not good. <laughs> and I go in and I looked in the mirror and, and I saw myself accurately for the first time in God knows when. And I looked like somebody ready to go on the set of The Walking Dead. I've got this greenish gray cast to my face. Uh, I, I don't look anything at all then like I do today. I mean, it looks like a completely different human being. And... Uh, I hollered at my wife that I needed to go on the Atkins diet that evening because I had years earlier had an experience with Atkins that was mostly positive until I decided one day I, I missed ice cream. And, and if I gained a bunch of weight back, I could always just go back on Atkins. Well, that was a really dumb idea, it turned out. But January 2015, I'm looking in the mirror and I, I, I realize I'm, I'm, I'm at death's door. I looked like a heart attack or a stroke about to happen. And so I gradually started walking, walking the dog. And I walked off in the next three years, I walked off 94 pounds, got off all the psychiatric medications. Into 2015, I was off the antipsychotics and antidepressants. The end of 2016, I was off the Ativan that I was on for eight and a half years. And at the end of 2017, I was off the Trazodone which I took to help me sleep at night for eight and a half years. And with the exception of two uh, runs of antibiotics for upper respiratory infection, I had no pharmaceutical meds whatsoever since the fall of 2017. And I don't anticipate ever needing them again. Beautiful. So uh, you mentioned that you, your symptoms went away when you took medical marijuana. But what was the difference between symptoms going away and actually healing? Well, the thing is, 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 is medical marijuana doesn't heal anything. It treated 
my symptoms to where they were enormously reduced. You know, I, I, I wasn't, I wasn't, when I was prior to cannabis, I was an angry, depressed person. Hmm. Very angry all the time because I felt so horrible. And, and I couldn't carry on a civil conversation with anybody. I was very socially inappropriate. Um, medical marijuana made me a more socially appropriate person. I, I could carry on a conversation almost intelligently at times. I, because I wasn't anxious, I wasn't as quick to anger as I'd always been before. And because I was sleeping better, uh, I was not, <laughs> everything else got better. Yeah. Um, but it didn't fix anything. Mm -hmm. it, it was a temporary thing. It was a medicine that did a wonderful thing for me. But it was never going to fix me. The carnivore way of eating eliminated for good all of my symptoms. As long as I continue to eat this way, I never have to worry about major depression with psychotic features, anxiety, or insomnia coming back into my life. So that's the big difference. And the removal of medications happened after carnivore or with medical marijuana, it started to happen? That happened, that happened before, before carnivore. Um, and... I tell people, don't do what I did. <laughs> you're on meds, keep taking your meds, talk to your doctor when you feel like you you don't need them anymore about help having your doctor help you titrate off of them safely. Because I had a significant background in, in psychology, working in private profit psych hospitals as a counselor, I knew where to go look for the information online from the pharmaceutical companies because when I took a medicine I wanted to know everything about it including the titration schedule because when I worked in the field what we saw a lot was people would take meds especially people with thought disorders bipolar disorders schizophrenia those kind of things that they would take their meds for a while they would get stable they would go leave the hospital go back to their life and those meds were very expensive and they had side effects or other effects that were very unpleasant. And the patients would get frustrated and stop taking, they're like, what do I need to take this for? I'm not crazy now. And of course they would stop taking their meds and then all their symptoms would come back full force. Well, I didn't want to be one of those people. So I researched all my meds. And when it was time to start titrating off of them, I followed the recommended titration schedule um, for all those meds. Oh. Uh, the hardest one to come off of was, was the Ativan, um, which is no, benzodiazepines are notoriously difficult to come off mm -hmm. of. And I'll never forget after I took, the day after I took my last eighth of a milligram, of Ativan, I woke up with vertigo. And I had vertigo for the next three months. I had to use a lot of medical marijuana to get through that. That was not fun at all. Um, but that's how I got off. I, I was off all my meds before carnivore. And I'd lost 94 pounds through the low carb and walking. Um, and I, I didn't start carnivore to lose weight at all. I get asked that all the time. You know, how much weight did you lose? How much weight did you lose? I'm what? I didn't. That's not why I started carnivore. I started carnivore because I didn't want to be crazy anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, I did lose 22 more pounds over the, the first four months I was carnivore. And I'll never forget this. Somebody on Twitter was badgering me about how many calories a day was I consuming that I couldn't possibly be consuming enough calories. If I was if I was consuming enough calories to get through the day with just me, I would gain all my weight back. That was nonsense, of course, but that's what I was being told. So just to shut them up, I figured, did the math and figured out 
that I was consuming 4,200 calories a day, and I still lost 22 pounds. Um, I've got excellent labs. My my cholesterol has come down every year. My triglycerides in 2015 were th over 300. Today, or in the last time I had lab work done was February of last year. My triglycerides were down to 53. Wow. Um, I got one test to that measured my cardiovascular, my inflammation levels. If I can pull that up here, well, I, natu naturally, if I wanted, it's not handy like it used to be. Anyway, I, I have a zero point four percent chance of ever having a cardiovascular event, and some doctors said you could live forever if you keep it there. Like, well, I don't want to live forever. That that would get boring, but I like that notion that I'm going to have more longevity. I don't have to worry about a heart attack. I don't have to worry about a cart. You know arteries getting clogged and uh it's just i've experienced zero downside in 1669 days of only eating meat and drinking water i've not there's never been a moment or any reason for me to think geez maybe i ought to rethink this it's just keeps every day continues to be better than the day before without fail maybe you're really in would never die at some point as no, you are getting better and better every day. Well, one day, one day my heart's going to say, oh, we've run out of beats. Good night. Yeah. And that'll be fun. But between now and that moment, my quality of life is going yeah. to be spectacular. True. And and my wife, she's carnivore. She's a month behind me. I, I tell people jokingly, she waited to see if I survived the first 30 days before she jumped on the carnivore train. And she eliminated osteoarthritis in both her shoulders and in her hand, just eating meat and drinking water. And our quality of life together is just beyond. Awful. At times, we look at each other and just start laughing, thinking we're like, this is like a fairy tale now. She's 64, I'll be 62 in March. But when your hormones are in balance and you're not consuming anything inflammatory, guess what? Your libido still functions. And so we get to enjoy our time together in ways that we never could before carnival. And, and our communication in our marriage is just off the charts good today. There's nothing that we can't address with one another in, in safety and comfort. And the peace of mind is just, it's glorious. And one other thing that's really great about this way of eating is over time, you develop this quiet level of confidence. It's not arrogance. It's just confidence that I never, ever experienced before carnival. It's not like I, you know, I know I'm not invincible. I know I'm not bulletproof. But I, I'm confident that as long as I continue to eat this way, Health-wise, I have nothing to fear. I'm more concerned because I am kind of clumsy. I'm more concerned about tripping and falling and busting my head open than anything else. And you also uh, talked about... Uh, first, this might be a quick question. Um, I always thought that you were only a musician and that was your source of income, but... Uh, now I realize that you had other jobs. Knowing about your condition, how were you able to keep a job, do something, and also, you know, with all those symptoms, with all those problems, it seems impossible. Well, for many years, I being a musician was my sole source of income. Uh -huh. And then I got to the place where I would start getting phone calls saying, why don't you just stay home tonight? You're too hard to get along with. Mm -hmm. And that would just shock me to no end because in my mind, hey, we sound great. I was not aware of a problem. And, and again, excuse me, it goes back to, like I said, I, I, would, I got to the point to where I couldn't accurately perceive my environment and I couldn't perceive how I was 
looking and presenting myself to other people. There are pictures of me playing music when uh, in the late 90s, early 2000s. And in my head, as I remember those jobs, I'm having a blast. I'm having a wonderful time. But outwardly, I look like I'm ready to kill someone. I look furious. I don't look like I'm having a good time at all. I just look pissed off. And I was completely oblivious to this. Um, and then there was a 13-year period where I couldn't work at all um, because I was on too many medications. And I couldn't, I couldn't keep my behavior in check to even think about performing. In fact, I thought I would never perform again. But I'm happy to tell you that last year, I joined the band. After we got reliable transportation, I looked at my wife and I said, do you realize all the boxes are checked off for me to go back to gigging again? And she's like, if that's what you want to do, have at it. And... It's been the most wonderful experience. Every note of every song has just been pure joy. Pure joy. And I was able, you know, when I was crazy, I couldn't progress past a certain point in proficiency. No matter how hard I practice, I couldn't get past a certain point. And now today, the only thing that limits me is time. If I could, if my if my hand would let me, I, I would I would play eight hours a day every day just to get better. But uh, I'm able to practice as many hours as I need to. I'm able, able to perform at a very, very high level. Just here a few weeks ago, I had the opportunity. I was asked to jam with a touring band and found that I could I could hold my own with these professional, I mean highly professional, well paid people. I could I could keep pace with them. And, and so that's that's my next my next dream is to be able to do a regional tour with a band and be able to go on the road and perform in different places throughout the southeast. And uh, God willing one day that will occur. Beautiful. And something about calories and uh, calories out, cal um, calories in, calories out, and stuff like that. With calories in, in calories out, you can't, uh, you can't heal, cure mental illness. You cannot uh, cure skin conditions, um, joint problems. That is something important also to point out. Maybe some people manage to lose some weight, um, but feeling miserable. Well, I would encourage you and your audience to check out some of Professor Bart Kay's YouTube stuff mm -hmm. because he talks about calories with contempt. I love it. He's like, calories are just a, a, a unit of measuring heat. Yeah. They have nothing to do with nutrition. Nothing. See, that's another thing. We've all been taught all these myths. You know, you got to watch your calories now. You got to watch your calories. You're going to get, you're going to get gain weight. The only way, the only way to lose weight is to eat less and move around more and all that stuff. And that's just pure nonsense. Yeah. I could care less about how many calories I consume in a day. How I feel is how I judge my health. I don't keep a list or a chart, you know, I've had X number of calories today and, oh gosh, I went over or I'm, I'm in a deficit or what am I going to do? I don't fool with any of that. When I get hungry, I eat. When I eat, I eat what I crave that satisfies me and I eat to total satiety each and every meal. And I never put a sweet taste into my mouth. Those are the directions that I learned from 10 year plus veterans at Zeroing In on Health on Facebook. People like Kelly Hogan, Dr. Lisa Wiedemann, Ch Charles Washington. Folks have been carnivore, you know, 12, 13, 15, 20 years, have no problems whatsoever in their life. 
And Kelly Hogan very special mention because she might be the one human being I've ever met that might be happier than me. <laughs> might be. And she's in her 40s and looks like she's 25. Yeah. It, it's just insane. So calories are never a concern for me in my coaching other people on how to succeed at the carnival way of eating. The issue of calories is they only bring it up once and then I'm like, Tell them to take that and throw it in the trash where it belongs because yeah. calories are just a measure of heat. They really don't matter. Something else I would like to get more into is the medical marijuana. I mean, you yeah. used it as a cookie first. Uh, how did, how are you using it after carnivore or how often you are using them? I only use it now before bedtime to help me I sleep better with it. That's the only time I use it. I don't use it during the day at all anymore. Don't need to, which I really like. Um, and I, I'm confident that probably here in a couple of years, I won't even need, need it to help sleep. Uh, it's just, it was never something that I thought, well, I'll, I'll take the, I'll do this for the rest of my life. That was never in, in my plan. It was use it until I don't need to use it anymore because it is not cheap. Um, <laughs> it's, not, it's very expensive. And so I, I, I just use it at night before bedtime and that's it. Once in a great while, I might have a little recreational experience, but that's very rare these days. Usually if I have company come over, it's the only time that happens. And I very rarely have company. <laughs> right. And in what form is it? Is it in the form of edible as you started with? or I, I prefer edible. My wife makes is very good at making can of butter. So you purchase flour and then I just hand it over to her and say, make me some butter, honey. And, and she has a process that she goes through. And I prefer it that way. I, I I will smoke it, but I don't like to because I don't like what it does to my throat. Mm -hmm. I learned um, early on that if I smoked it too often, that my chest, I, I would get what I would call black lung. I'd get real congested. And who wants to be congested? Not me. So I, it's just, I prefer to eat it. I prefer to consume it. That way, um, it's actually more potent when you when you ingest it versus. Oh blood. yeah, and uh, you know, for what I use it for, it works perfectly. Mm -hmm. okay. And what are the ingredients of the mix that he use? I I don't know the recipe. I, I don't know my wife. My wife takes can of butter. She goes through this process. The, the 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 cannabis flour is is dried, crushed, heated up to activate the THC so that it it's called a decarbonization carb it's decarbing the flour and then it's put in with um, butter and then and then simmered for 24 to 36 hours. Ooh. And then you then you 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 put it put it in a port put it in a, a glass bowl put it in the refrigerator and then the uh, water separates from um, the fat the butter and you pour the water out and you melt the butter down my wife would then pour it into little plastic Tupperware things and then I would use it as, with a spoon as far as Anything specific about potency and how many milligrams? We don't have a clue. We don't. We don't have the facilities to measure that kind of stuff. <laughs> and before, well, nowadays you use it only before going to bed. Um, but before that, how would you deal with the high? Because I have had experience with edibles, and they are they hit you hard. They can. They certainly can. I, I, you know, I, I got to where I knew how much to take and how much not to take. Um, so there was a lot of trial and error in the beginning, but 
but now I, I know exactly how much to use and, and, and it's not really an issue. And plus I'm using it to help me sleep. If it, the quicker I fall asleep, the better, you know, I, 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 I never, I, I, I lay my head down at night and in less than 20 seconds, I'm sound asleep every night without fail. And I love that because <laughs> I remember, you know, for decades, I would lay in bed and when am I ever going to fall asleep? When am I ever going to fall asleep? And now it's, you know, for many years, it's just not been a problem now. Fantastic. And uh, I mean, you know, we have gotten out of the kingdom of Animalia and we have gotten to the kingdom of Plantia. And how about um, uh, fungi? Have, ha have you had any experience with mushrooms? I started microdosing mushrooms about six months ago. After a friend of mine who used to be carnivore, but now she's kind of stepped back from it a little bit just recommended to me that it would be something worth looking into that I might find it helpful. And I watched this documentary, which I highly recommend for everybody. Uh, it's on Netflix. It's called Fantastic Fungi. And that's where I learned about all the benefits of consuming mushrooms in microdoses and in macrodoses, uh, especially the, the part that really got me, pushed me into using it was the combination of neuroplasticity, your brain, mm -hmm. different hemispheres connecting with one another more regularly instead of just the three, which is what they call the daily normal. And then there's neurogenesis, where the mushrooms inspire the body to grow new nerves, new nervous pathways. And as somebody who took psych meds for 23 years, that really interested me because I know that my brain chemistry was significantly altered and not in my favor. Yeah. Taking those meds as prescribed for, for two plus decades. And it's been amazing how great microdosing has been for me because I I'm, I'm 95% less, less irritable than I was before I started doing that. Uh, which my wife really appreciates <laughs> immensely. And, and everything is in a sharper focus and you don't have the sedative effects that cannabis can give you. So it's a much more effective medicine, especially for daytime for me. Um, and I can perform very well on it. With cannabis, some nights I would play really well using it in some nights not so good um, because it will alter your per perceptions just enough to where you know you want you want to hit the, the seventh fret well but you landed on the eighth because you couldn't count clearly you couldn't see it well uh, I don't have those problems now at all and it, it's really been an effective thing and and even if you don't have mental health issues, if you don't have a history of mental health problems. Uh, there are other forms of uh, other strains of mushrooms like lion's mane. Mm -hmm. Very, very good for human beings to consume lion's mane. And, and they're natural. They're, they're, they're not something made in a laboratory somewhere. You, you can grow them at home without any difficulty if you wish. Yeah. Uh, it's just and it doesn't surprise me that they've been, they were made illegal as they were because the government doesn't want us to expand our level of consciousness, which is what happens when you take a macro dose. And I have found the macro doses to be incredibly wonderful experiences with no downside whatsoever. Uh, there's no hangover the next day. There's yeah. no feeling of like, gosh, I, I I ate too many mushrooms yesterday. Oh my gosh, why, why did I do that? I've never had a bad experience. And I attribute that to the fact that my outlook on life is so positive now. 
if, if I had tried those, tried a macro dose of mushrooms when I was severely ill, it probably would have been a horror show because I was not in a positive state of mind at all. But today, I, 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 I'm i very thankful that I learned about mushrooms. I, as a matter of fact, that's one of the things I thank my God for every night. Meat and water, grounding and mushrooms and psychedelics in general. I, 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 I'm very appreciative for that because I've learned so much that's been beneficial for me through the, the macro doses. I've learned all sorts of, I learned I was carrying around darkness from leftover tr from trauma from when I when I was 11 years old I got hit by a car on a bicycle mm -hmm. I never thought any you know I got hit I got hurt I got well life went on I never was like somebody who thought well this was horrible I never thought of any of that and come to find out the mushrooms assured me you've been repressing that and you can't progress until you purge your your body of that which was an interesting experience but I felt like I lost a chunk of darkness out of my being when that happened. And it just goes to show there's no ceiling on how good, how healthy we can become. There just really isn't. And, and uh, as a thankful Catholic convert, I, I'm thankful that God gave us mushrooms because they are an effective medicine and they're non-addictive. Mm -hmm. completely non-addictive you cannot over there's not a recorded case of somebody overdosing and killing themselves with mushrooms it just besides it would make you sick and you puke you puke before that ever got close to happening yeah uh, it's just been a remarkable experience and one that i've never anticipated being having this wasn't on my radar but i, I i'm really grateful to the individual um uh, who, who recommended I look into that because it's 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 really it's really been a blessing, and it works great with the carnivore way of eating. You know, it's mm -hmm. not in conflict. I'm not consuming mushrooms for nourishment. It's medicine. It's medicine. Yeah. Uh, some time ago, which is very recent, and one of the reasons why I was curious to ask about this, I don't know whether you have talked about psychedelics on other podcasts or not, was because I had an experience with a very small dose with one mushroom only, and the effect that it had on me was immense. I wasn't hallucinating. I was just going about my life with no significant change, maybe some colors, I, I felt some colors, or my imagination became more vivid. Apart from that, nothing else, no hallucinations whatsoever. And I, the, the interesting thing is that I wasn't feeling euphoric or any specific feeling that I could point uh, put my finger on, but I knew that something is happening inside me and to this day, maybe it's been more than 30 days, maybe it's been over a month or so, uh, I can see that it has affected the way I translate, has affected the way I do things, it has made me more creative and more courageous. And this is only one mushroom that actually didn't give me any hallucinogenic experience. That doesn't surprise me at all. Now, I've had more than one mushroom. I've had many of them. Um, because once I discovered what was possible, what, what, what a real mushroom trip was like, I learned so much about myself that I didn't know. I wanted to, I, I want to know it all. And, and so that's why I, I tend to, to take a macro dose twice a month if if I have product available. Um because it's it's always a very positive experience and what hallucinations I have had have been beautiful. It's never there's never been a single time that I was concerned or I became anxious. Even the time that I, 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 
the mushroom said, you need to purge that darkness and you need to do it now. And I had to try to go to the bathroom. It was, that was exciting. But uh, mm, even that, what? even oh. even even that was not a, a bad experience because mm -hmm. the mushrooms were communicating why this was necessary. Yeah, the mushrooms will talk to you. Okay, what what were they saying? I didn't catch that part. They were telling me that I had to I had to purge this the trauma that I had been. Oh uh, yeah. With. Okay. Right. Right. And uh, I'm so glad they did because it, it's made an enormous difference. And, you know, people people who've not taken or had that kind of an experience will never be able to understand what I'm saying. I'm, yeah. I'm sure people, the uninitiated will be like, well, geez, he's, he's, he's still crazy. No, I'm not. <laughs> Don't have hallucinations all the time. No, it's only when I choose to have them. Yeah. Always very, very pleasant. It's very enjoyable. Um. I, I discovered I can still play guitar when I'm under the influence. I can still do all sorts of things. It doesn't, it changes your per, your perception, but if you don't want your perception to be changed, it's easily to mentally dominate it. I don't have to let that happen. But to me, that's one of the things that's enjoyable about doing it. I want to see what's locked in my mind. I want to mm -hmm. see what my consciousness can show me without filters and i think that's one of the reasons why i'm so excited to see uh the legalization for psilocybin being promoted and starting to spread throughout the country because you know we we should have the freedom to examine our consciousness and and, and expand it where possible and I think one of the reasons why government doesn't want us to do that is because we become less dependent creatures upon yeah. the, the government. Our our quality of life explodes in ways the government cannot control. And the peace of mind that I have combined with the carnivore way of eating and the microdosing of mushrooms and what I've learned from macrodoses is just it's beyond anything I ever thought was humanly possible. Another tinfoil hat uh, hypothesis I have is that it is not in the benefit of the big pharma that we consume our own med medication. Not at that... all. Not. I agree 100%. I think that's very valid. Um, and, you know, it's interesting, and I learned this from watching the uh, the Fantastic Fungi documentary. You know, there are people, cancer patients, terminal cancer patients, find that they're they're extremely anxious. They're very freaked out and worried about dying. And after they have one macrodose, sometimes some people need to, but usually one macrodose puts them at ease and they're no longer afraid. Because you learn that this life is just part of a journey. It's not the be all to end all. Um, and 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 gosh, what a what a therapeutic benefit to somebody who who knows they're dying of cancer that they only have X number of months or weeks left to live. And what would be the what would be the the quality of life with that kind of fear? always at the at the surface all the time. And that would be miserable, I would think. So, you know, that that's another reason why I think it should be legalized because people will benefit immensely from it. And it's not something that you do it's not something that you you don't need a bunch of mushrooms and then hop in a car unless you're an idiot. And I'm not. <laughs> would never do that. It, it, it's just really been an incredible thing. And I want to encourage people, check out that documentary on Netflix, Fantastic Fungi. And then there's another documentary on Netflix that I recommend people check out the uh, psilocybin episode. It's the The whole documentary is called How to Change Your Mind. Oh, yeah. I started it last night, exactly. <laughs> and, 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 well, there's some great stuff in there. There's some mm -hmm. fantastic information in that. Um, I hope to one day be able to uh, enjoy enjoy a mescaline experience. 
especially after watching that episode. That that was really. I want to see all there is to see. With my eyes open and with my eyes closed. I I I want to see it all. Because now that I know that there's a doorway to visualizing those sorts of things, I want to try to frequent it as much as is reasonably possible. Because I I just every trip is a, is a very educational experience. I've never had an experience using macrodoses that I haven't been very happy that I did so. And I can't say that about any other medicine. Beautiful. So yeah, you watched the first episode of uh, How to Change Your Mind last night. I think about 10 minutes of it was remaining when I needed to go to bed. I'm going to definitely finish it and watch another episode and this guy michael pollen though with respect to nutrition he has come to conclusions opposite of ours i like the way that he's very open-minded he's a curious curious soul and he wants to discover things i really like his spirit and his way of looking to things and something else about you is that i believe that you are very convincing you talk about your diet and your whole family has followed you and this is not a very common experience um also with your faith your family also converted after you from what i understand is that true no we 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 converted together i actually uh my wife and i had i had an annulment issue that took forever to get resolved because we had both been married previously. Mm -hmm. Hers was done in a week. Mine took a year and a half. So it was our kids, our, my stepchildren uh, were converted and brought into the fullness of the church first. And because of the annulment issue, I, my wife and I had to wait until that was resolved before we could have our marriage convalidated and we can be brought into the fullness of the church. So since 2006 or seven, it's a shame I can't remember the year. I was on a lot of meds then. So there's a lot I can't remember from that period of time. But uh, that, that was one of the few, marrying her and converting to Catholicism were the two good decisions I ever made in my life while I was crazy. Pretty much all the other decisions I made while I was crazy were not good decisions. Or at best, they were borderline. But but, yeah, I, I I'm very thankful. My wife and I now attend a traditional Latin Mass chapel. Um, I would never give up my faith for any reason whatsoever. You can shoot me. I'm not going. I'm not going to speak poorly about it. Um. It's just been the most beautiful thing. Every Sunday, every Sunday morning at Mass is, is always beautiful. It, it's, it's provided me also with peace of mind on a level I never thought possible. And after carnivore, I was able to become that much more appreciative and thankful and, and grateful that I was able to to be brought into the fullness of the church and it, it's just been spectacular um very humbling and yet extraordinarily beautiful and necessary and how about your mm, convincing do you have anything to say about that that uh, after you became con carnivore other members of your family also followed you I mean, well, I know that your wife just waited for you to see if you die or not, but how about the others? <laughs> yeah, uh, my my stepson, he he jumped on the carnivore train around the same time my wife did. He doesn't follow it as well as he should, but he's a grown man. What am I going to do? Grounding? Uh, <laughs> he's in his 30s. I don't think he's going to take well. Take <laughs> 
But uh, yeah, the, those are the only family members that I'm aware of that are, are eating this way. Uh, my sister, who would benefit greatly because of her ulcerative colitis, she's convinced because she did research that uh, she's going to keep that autoimmune issue for the rest of her life. And I'm just like, you don't have to do that. But, you know, it's the old case of you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. And she's not interested in taking a drink. Mm -hmm. So she doesn't get to experience the benefits of living symptom-free life. Uh, my mom, she did cut back on her sugar intake on my recommendation because she was a hardcore sugar addict. Mm -hmm. And she was even giving her dog cookies. And I was just like, if you want to keep oh that dog, God. you've got to stop doing that because you're going to kill him. He's going to have a shorter life if you keep feeding him that stuff. Uh, but that's really the only, you know, nobody else in my family except my immediate family is doing it. They, but that is still, impressive. They, that has they, not been my experience. They still look at me as if and they expect me to say or do something crazy like I would have decades ago. But that guy no longer exists. For all practical purpose, that version of me is dead and gone. And I'm so glad because that guy was an asshole. <laughs> okay. I have had some classmates, so people that I grew up with have 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 jumped on the carnivore train and are doing very well. I've had more luck with that than I have with family members. Yeah, it is always always easier to convince friends. They are more curious. They would listen to you than family. And uh, could you uh, let us know what you eat on a typical day? Well, the directions to succeed at the carnivore way of eating state very clearly to only eat the meat that you crave, that satisfies you, that you can afford. And so, since, well, since July 16th, 2018, I've had bacon with every meal. Uh, in the beginning, it was a lot of steak, steak and eggs and bacon. After two, week, two weeks, eggs stopped being satisfying. And then uh, steak got more expensive than we could afford. In starting in December of 2018, I discovered that lean ground beef, 9010 or 937 ground beef, it was just like nectar from heaven for me. And so since December of 2018, I've only meals that I prepare at home have been lean ground beef and bacon, which I eat three times a day. Uh, I, I've eaten a handful of steaks over the years that other people have bought for me. And every bite of every meal is always just ridiculously delicious. I get asked all the time. I had somebody on Facebook ask me this morning, don't you get tired? Don't you need variety? And I'm like, it's food. It's not entertainment. It's not a TV show. It's fuel. No, I've never, I've never had a moment where I was like, Gosh, I wish I could have something else with instead of just this. I look forward. I'm looking forward to dinner tonight. Yeah. Because I know it's going to be just insanely good. And I'm also certain that when if the day comes and my body says, okay, you need to make an adjustment, that I'll recognize that and, and make the necessary adjustment. Uh, I just don't anticipate that happening anytime soon. True. Yeah, for example, today I had uh, six eggs in the morning. And I think, yeah, six eggs and uh, at least two packs of bacon. I went to work, came back home. And just before our interview, I had... Again, two packs of bacon, six six eggs, and one steak. And it's like when I got high on coffee and I feel some electric currents going through my head. 
So, I mean, that's an amazing food. It makes me energized. It makes me feel good and present and conscious. Cognitively, I do better. So that is a food that I am always looking forward to. I don't have to. I uh, Variety is overrated. I agree completely. I agree completely. I, I, I just have never felt like I was missing out on anything. All my needs are satisfied when, by eating lean ground beef and bacon. Everything I need nutritionally, I get from that combination. And I eat until I'm not another bite full every meal. And we have figured out just exactly how much meat it takes to reach that point. And so for us, it's just my wife has already pre-measured the ground beef patties out. I know how many slices of bacon to put in the bottom of my air fryer to get the right amount. It's 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 easy. It's so ridiculously simple. And 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 you know, I constantly get asked, "Well, don't you keep track of this, that, and the other?" And I'm like, "No." Did our ancestors a hundred thousand years ago keep a log of how much salt they were eating and how much water they were drinking and you know what was their fat to protein ratio and all that stuff? No, they weren't. They didn't even know about that. What did they do? When they got hungry, they went and found an animal. They 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 secured it, killed it, and processed it. And then they ate until they were full. They might save some of that meat for, for later in the day. Okay. But they didn't need, even think about food again until the next time they were hungry. Why should I be any different today in 2023? Makes sense. So I, I I'm I'm a firm believer that if human beings would stop trying to complicate the hell out of everything, life would be a lot better for everyone. True. I want to be respectful of your time and thank you again for coming on. Could you let us know where can people follow you and your work? Well, you can follow me on Twitter at Stickman Bleeding. That's S-T-I-C-K-M-A-N-B-L-E-E-D-I-N. Do not add a G. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm spending more time on Twitter now since Elon Musk took it over because they don't censor you like Instagram and Facebook do. Instagram, you can find me at thankful.carnivore. Uh, but my Instagram right now is heavily shadow banned, mm -hmm. which is frustrating. But that's what happens when you've got unkind people running social media platforms yeah uh you can also find me on facebook under brett lloyd and you can also find thankful carnivore on facebook that both of those will get you in touch with me if you need to if you've got questions i answer all private messages uh happy to talk with people if you've got questions concerns look me up i'll i'll i'll, I'll set you right as best i can Awesome. Thank you for your time and have a great rest of the day. Hope you've enjoyed this episode of Round the Fire. If you are watching this video on YouTube, please give it a like and hit the subscribe button. If you're listening to the podcast, please leave the five star review. It would cost you nothing but help me a great deal, especially if you do so on Apple Podcasts. Also, if you feel particularly generous, consider supporting me via Patreon, PayPal, or Bitcoin.